Hey guys, so welcome to another midweek's episode of our how-to videos. So the most asked questions we've had was about our paint and what paint we use on our terrier and our exterior. Yep. And um, so we decided let's give you guys a video explaining exactly what paint we used and when we used it and the process of painting. And this information we're providing you guys has also been from all the research we did, the knowledge we had before starting the boat with regards to paintings and coatings that come from a commercial industry. And so here's what we're sharing with you guys about all the paint products, primers and all of that that we had. From the best to plausible possible solutions. So first up, we're gonna start you guys with primers and we use two different, or well actually three different primers. Two epoxy based primer and one's a high build two pack primer from the automotive industry and so let's get down to that we'll start first off with the epoxy primer so if you want my input this is the best primer Sigma. and the secret part is that company there ppg look them up they're probably the biggest paint manufacturing company in the world when it comes to commercial applications they're bigger than all the other guys and these guys make the hardcore stuff. And let me check the bottom. What does it say there? Protective and marine coatings. So if you're buying, for example, a mm, systems product, it's probably these guys that made it for them. So that's where you wanna go to. So Google them. I know in the United States, some of those products you guys can't get directly off the shelf. You'll have to buy it from a third party. And the reason is because of all the regulations that is on these products. But this, I like to call it, it's the Hulk. As you can see, it's because of that green color. And this stuff is probably the strongest primer you can find around. It's an epoxy based primer, super tough. If you want to use it external, below the waterline, a lot of the guys use this as a semi-preventative for osmosis. It is a barrier. I wouldn't say it is the permanent protection, but it is a barrier for sure. We used this in Ontario in the beginning before we found out that they had a, a white or light gray primer. Yep. So we did use a bit of it in Ontario, but not the whole interior. Um, we used this on our hull outside while we were doing our prep. So you can yep. see that this is where it comes from and it's the paint that we used. For Ontario, we did end up switching over to a cheaper option. A cheaper alternative um, and the reason is it's because it's not going to be exposed yeah. to as much water hopefully the boat won't be permanently flooded so we switched over to alternative we switched over to these guys also a very nice product good product we use it yeah pretty much the whole boat on the interior has been covered with it we didn't use it on the exterior though um, it's a good solid product, it's epoxy. The downside of epoxies, they don't sand well until they're completely cured, which is like 20 days after you've started. And if you leave it for that long, you have to sand everything before you put another coat, otherwise it will peel off. And the nice thing about epoxy is, is if you apply it, eight hours after that, you can go on with your next coat, no sanding needed and all of that. But it's not a perfect finish unless you're spraying it on then so that's the only downside and i would say too. when you put your epoxy primer on you put it it's the first paint that you would put on your exposed wood it will seal off your wood because it's an epoxy and um yeah. wood or whatever you want to do wood, wood fiberglass vibe, yeah whatever you feel like putting on and as well as so we put two coats of our epoxy primer on the whole interior so yeah. epoxy paints are all two pack paints so it means you're gonna have Two separate, put this one into that one and voila. Obviously with ratios, you're just going to put yeah. this whole thing in there because it does have a curing time. Yeah. So be quick, not as quick as you would with pool coat, but yeah, you can't take your time like you would with a normal house paint. The essential is to mix as much as you're going to use for that particular area. Don't mix enough to paint the whole boat because you obviously won't paint the whole boat in in an hour or so so give yourself a work time if you they call it a pot life that's the amount of time you have with the paint in the container and then obviously once you spread out you get more time but work within the pot life for your total time and then you'll always be safe so if it says a 45 minute pot life mix enough to give you for 45 minutes and then mix a new batch and paint that again 
So that's just the tips that we've got from regards to that. This kind of brush here that Simone's showing a is, brush. is a blondie brush. It's a, usually a, a resin based brush. Um, fairly cheap, usable for everything, but do not expect a perfect finish out of this. So if you want to do edgings in that, you probably want to go for more like a premium professional brush like that. Much smoother finish when you, when you do the end brush. So that's brush related. When it comes down to rollers, here's where epoxies are going to destroy them. So these are little spongy rollers. Great to use if you're doing a very small area and you're just doing a touch up. You're done with it, put your glove over it, chuck it away. Um, they don't last very long though, so buy quite a few because you're going to go through them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you use yeah. it for small areas, great because it's not going to last long. It's going to break down. That's just what it is. I've tried a whole bunch of them. Even the more fancy ones, the little pink ones, they last a little longer, but epoxy is going to chow through all of them. Then you get a short mohair roller. So that's one of these. I'll leave the brand in there. I don't know if you get them all over, but it's a really short pile, short hair pile roller. It's a mohair, short yeah. mohair roller. These are good. Don't get the pink ones because their hair comes off. The white ones work great. Mm. That we found in the long run works the best. Uh, it yields a very good result for a roller. So roller options are those. You can, you, know, you can test and play around with it and see which one you prefer and what finish you prefer as well. So the third option primer is this. It's a MS primer. It's a high build primer. It's probably as high as the second epoxy primer we showed you. It's high build. So what it means basically... And it also comes with the hardener. Yeah, they're all two packs. So what it means is it's it's a high build. It has a high solids content, which means it will lay quite a bit of paint down and will be really thick in color, if I could phrase it like that. So it covers very well. So those, those are good primers. They do the work well. These, this automotive primer that I just showed you guys, if you go to any automotive painting guys and you just ask them you're looking for high build primer to paint a boat, they would probably advise you to the right paint. It's really good, it's tough, it's hard wearing. Below the waterline would probably be somewhere I would, wouldn't suggest it for unless you put it, unless you have a power boat that goes in and out quite often, but generally I wouldn't suggest painting below the waterline with it. But great for interior, we're actually going to do all our cabinet doors in this. Yeah. And the reason for that is you can get a really, really smooth finish out of this. It sands down within eight hours, you're sanding, you're working it again. And with that, you have to sand. If you want to get, get a really nice smooth finish, just give it a nice light sanding over it, then apply the next coat and that's perfect. So that stuff really works great for that. And it's also your cheapest option. And it's your cheapest option in a two-pack primer. You can go to single-pack primers, and um, they'll obviously be cheaper, easier to work with, but they have a lot of downsides to them. Whereas these are more... Durable. Much more durable. Um, bond, bond better. Yeah, epoxy primers, if you're talking sense of primer-wise, they're the best primers you're going to get around. They're the toughest, strongest, longest lasting. In between that, we went for a texture coat. So what we used is... We used this. Stone chip sealant. It's actually used for the underside of your car. And the stuff is pretty tough. It's water-based. So you spray it on, it gives a nice little texture finish, dries up, and then you put your top coat over that. And this keeps its shape and form. So there's a number of ways to do this. You can either shoot it with a gun, otherwise you can buy the liquid and you can try and roll it. This is how the gun looks. It's a pretty nifty little thing. It's a pretty simple system, but yet effective. Or otherwise you could buy a texture roller and roll it on with a texture roller. It is a good product. It, it worked for us. It gave us the effect that we wanted it. And uh, just to break up the walls a little bit, because to get everything smooth, perfect all the time but it's kind of a hard look to go for and unless it's come out of a mold the chances that you're going to get it perfect. perfectly smooth within six months is, is quite difficult so that's why we went to that top coats now this is when you go to polyurethane and this is what we used for our top coats so after we put our primer after we put our stone chip <coughs> we added our polyurethane top coat yep. So for the interior we went with this marine, between these guys and PPG we used them both. On the interior we found product quality wise, 
roughly the same. Maybe the PPG might be a little bit better than this, but still very good. High solid content in it, really a good paint. Now the reason you go for urethane as a top coat is epoxies are not UV stable. So if you leave it exposed to sunlight, even if it's on the interior, it will yellow out if it's a white primer or if it's a gray primer, it will go yellowish. Uh, the green primer will change in color. Our hull has already changed in color. So it does change. It's not UV stable epoxies. And so when you put the urethane over that, you give it UV stability, you seal it off, and you give it that fine finish that you give it, and obviously the gloss finish that also helps the UVs. We went PPG 550 on the exterior, and then we went with the Unimarine interior in polyurethane. So urethane top coat, epoxy's base coat. So we've done two coats already on the interior of urethane, and now we're putting on our our third coat. The reason is to just build up the strength of, of the surface so if the first layer scratches there'll still be a white layer behind that and then the very first layer was pretty much just the tack layer where we then went with the second layer directly over that. The reason why we went with two pack paints it's a much more durable scratch resistant paint got a, a harder surface to it um, it dries a lot tougher than, than a normal residential paint. Like for example, a lot of boats that are paint manufacturers use this paint. And we know of two that use this paint. It's a Plascon product. Single pack. Um, if you want a good durable paint for the interior, you don't want to break the bank. Single pack, easy to use. That's your answer. Although there is downsides to it. It's not the toughest paint. It's not going to last as long as your polyurethane will. Definitely won't last as long as the polyurethanes will, but easy to work, easy to sand afterwards, easy to reapply. If you want to go single pack option, that's the way to go. So pool coat, as we know in South Africa is a common used name around here. It's because the guys use it to paint the, your pool, pretty much. It's a polyester pigmented resin, pretty much. So it forms a nice thick layer, it's good for bilges and that, cleans up really easily. The stuff is slippery as heck when it dries. So for your bilges, nothing pretty much sticks to it. it it's a good way to go for bilges. This is the product we'd recommend. Um, this is not particularly the manufacturer, you probably can't get them overseas, but... So NCS is quite a big company, you guys might be able to get it from them. If you're not, places to get this would be from resin manufacturers or otherwise resin distributors. So if you Google, this sells resin in your area, polyester resins, they will stock this. If you buy this from a marine store, I guarantee you, you're going to pay five times the price at least. So some buck saving over there. So we have two of these, two different colors. Uh, we have the cloud gray and then the white. And the cloud gray we used in our bulges that you saw in our previous video of how to restore your bulges was this cloud gray color. And then we used the white inside our, under our aft cabin bunk beds, yep. beds, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, we used white there because we wanted to be able to see everything because our water maker and all that stuff's going under there. It's a two part as well as this is a polyester. So you use your catalyst hardener as well. Some gloves, always essential. Always wear gloves when you paint because some of this paint is so difficult to get off your hands. And try not to dip your hair in paint like I've done numerous yeah. times. Especially when you use pool coat because it does not come and tape. So this is your general masking tape which will leave a residue, a sticky residue if left too long. Mm -hmm. So this is a better tape to use, it is specifically used for painting. Painter's tape, yeah. Yeah. So, so three yeah. times the price? Three times the price but a better no residue. product to use. So no residue. If you can't use this one but don't leave it on for too long because yeah. then it's not so much fun. Yeah. So if you're going to do it for the day, that's perfectly fine. You'll mask it up and you'll take it off when you're done painting. If you're going to leave it on for a while, get the proper painter's tape. Much more expensive, three times the price, but you'll have less problems. Something else that's super essential is a good quality mask. So these masks, very crucial that you have on, especially when painting two-pack paints, that stuff's Stinks, super strong, it's got a lot of solvents in it. Make you have one mother of a headache. Yeah, so in well ventilated area, use a mask. Thanks again for another episode and supporting us and please share our videos. Obviously we're publishing out of the famous old Africa continent. 
your guys sharing and, and subscribing and liking and all of that makes a big difference. Uh, stay tuned to our episode coming out. On Saturday? On Saturday. Awesome. I must ask you a question. Okay, put everything away. I must ask you a question.